What's up, guys? Brett Apley here from DailyFanMMA.com, back with another UFC Quick Picks on the Mayo Media Network. We have UFC Vegas 73 this weekend, Mackenzie Dern versus Angela Hill in the main event. Somewhat of a low-level card, but it should be pretty fun. I see a lot of entertaining matchups, fights that are going to end inside the distance. So still looking forward to it. Going to see some big scores on DraftKings. As usual, I'm going to give you my favorite cash game play, tournament play, salary play, and a matchup I like from a DraftKings perspective. Before I do, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, and comment below. Why don't you give me your standout play between 8.5K and 7.7K? I'm going to focus on the mid-range this week, at least in terms of this question. There's a lot of competitive fights. If you can correctly pick the winner or winners in this range, that's definitely going to give you a leg up on the field. So always curious to hear what you all have to say. Without further ado, let's get into my cash game play of the week. I'm going to the top of the board here with Natalia Silva at 9.7K. All right, in cash games this week, I'm rolling with Natalia Silva at 9.7K. The, the consensus that I've been hearing is just that, wow, she's so expensive, 9.7K for Natalia Silva. How are you going to pay up for that, especially in tournaments, which I can understand. I mean, Anthony Hernandez will be a standout option in 9.4K, and there's other fighters in the 9K range who are strong as well. But, I mean, Natalia Silva is very, very safe. She's minus 900 to win, and she has the best inside distance line on this slate by far. It's minus 175 to win inside the distance. So, yeah, 9.7K is a big price tag, but you have the safest fighter from a money line perspective and from a inside the distance perspective as well. She'll be somewhat boomer bust, I guess, in tournaments considering she's – not guaranteed to wrestle. I do think she could have success landing takedowns against Victoria Leonardo, but Leonardo is a grappler herself who want the fight on the ground. Silva should have a pretty distinct advantage at range, and I would expect her to want to keep the fight at distance. Leonardo has been TKO'd officially in both of her UFC losses. So Silva, at worst, you know, <clears throat> I say this with a grain of salt because Women's MMA especially, it's, it's pretty volatile. But at, at worst, Silva should win a comfortable decision with her striking. Maybe that doesn't score extremely well for tournaments. But I expect her to get the win here. And more than likely, I think she does hurt Leonardo along the way, finds a stoppage inside the distance. And 9.7K, you can pay up for her on this particular slate. There's a lot of value, a lot of uh, cheap options, I should say, for both cash games and tournaments. So I like Natalia Silva this week at the top of the board. 9.7K in cash. All right, in tournaments this week, I'm going to go with Diego Fajera at 8.7K. And I've heard this is somewhat of a hot take, so hopefully that is the case. Hopefully the public is not on him. Not to say that I'm very confident in Diego Fajera coming off a two-year layoff, having lost three fights in a row. But I just want to note that the fights he's lost being out grappled by Benil Dariush, by Gregor Gillespie, by Mateus Gamrot. Those are those are elite fighters in this division. And now he's fighting an opponent in Michael Johnson, who is a good striker and, you know, a veteran, but has been submitted by the likes of Darren Elkins and Tiago Moises and was out grappled to a loss by Stevie Ray in 2019. So Diego Fajera is a very, very skilled submission grappler, a finisher, only averages 0.75 takedowns per 15 minutes. So it, there, there's no guarantee of success here. I kind of want to make that point. This is not a safe play. There's bust risk here, both in the sense of him failing to grapple or just outright losing. However, I do think if he gets some grappling exchanges, he can find a win inside the distance. He's plus 120 inside the distance. That's a really strong number, especially for 8.7K. Hopefully the public's not on him, so he's not going to be the chalk of this range. And I just like the upside. If he loses, that's fine. You can play a little bit of Michael Johnson for cheap as well. But Diego Fajera in wins has scored big in the past, several 100-plus point victories. And I think this is a good matchup for him, a much better matchup than his recent losses. Good price tag as well. I like Diego Fajera in tournaments there at 8.7K. All right, my salary play of the week, I'm going to go with the main event here, and Angela Hill at 7.1K. I like her in all formats. I worry that she will be somewhat popular at this price tag, and I think it, you can make a fair argument to not play her in tournaments based on popularity, poor inside the distance line, and just the, the strength of this 
bottom tier in the sense that there's a lot of fighters with knockout upside. So if you want to take chances on Fialo, Shabazian, Mashate, etc., I think that's totally fine. And that's what I'll be doing too in tournaments. But I think Hill has a very clear path to victory against Mackenzie Dern. She's plus 150 to win. It's a very volatile fight. Mackenzie Dern might just go out there and win by submission in round one. So there's no floor on Angela Hill in theory. But Angela Hill is a better striker here. And she's very comfortable over 25 minutes, a very high volume fighter. And Mackenzie Dern just has not fared well with her wrestling throughout her UFC career. She's averaging 0.6 takedowns per 15 minutes. So if we get a 25 minute fight, I mean, we're, we're projecting Mackenzie Dern for about one takedown. And that could be enough, especially if it comes in round one. It could just lead to a submission, but it's really hard for me to invest in Dern with confidence, especially at a, a, a minus 170 betting line. If the fight plays out on the feet, which it historically should, considering Dern doesn't land takedowns very well, Hill is a superior striker. I mean, Hill has has more than a, a two and a half significant strike edge per minute on Mackenzie Dern. She's just slick. Wait, 10% better defensively. Um, again, really strong cardio. So, I at least think Hill has a path to victory here, a very clear one, striker versus grappler. 7.1K is a cheap price to pay. Yes, if Fialo and Shabazian and whoever are winning by knockout, then I would prefer them, and I like them for tournaments. But, I mean, Hill just scored 104 points in a three-round decision against Emily Ducade. So she does have a lot of volume in her game. Over 25 minutes, maybe she doesn't score 100 points, but I do think she has a fair ceiling and potentially a 100-point ceiling as well, despite a poor inside-the-distance line. So I like the price tag on Angela Hill. I like that there's a clear path to victory for her being the striker in this matchup against an opponent who has struggled historically with grappling, and she'll be my salary play of the week. All right, finally, my matchup of the week, I'm going with Anthony Hernandez versus Edmund Shabazian. Hernandez, the favorite, minus 210. Shabazian, plus 175. On DraftKings, Hernandez, 9.4K. Shabazian, 6.8K. This fight's minus 195 to end inside the distance. Unlike Johnny Walker versus Anthony Smith, which was a terrible fight, you know, outside of a couple exchanges, no one wanted to engage. I, I really think Anthony Hernandez is going to push a pace here. That's what he's done throughout his UFC career with great success. Back-to-back -back fights where he landed eight takedowns. Totally smashing from a DraftKings perspective. And he's fighting an opponent in Shabazian who has worn down via pace multiple times, finished inside the distance multiple times on the ground. And it just seems like a, a very real, realistic outcome for Hernandez should he win. He'll be very popular, unfortunately, but I think Hernandez has one of the best ceilings on this slate. Plus 130 to win inside the distance, but he has five plus takedown upside, can land a lot of ground and pound, earn control, just wear down Shabazian. I, I think he has a very strong floor and ceiling in a victory, but I mean, his two losses, he's been finished early and he was knocked out by Kevin Holland. Shabazian, the only thing he's really excelled at in his career has been early knockouts, early power. And if this fight plays out in the feet, Shabazian should be the more dangerous striker, which early on, I expect that it will. Of course, Hernandez will try and land takedowns, but Shabazian's going to get some striking exchanges here, and I just wouldn't be that surprised if he was able to hurt Hernandez. Um, plus 290 to win inside the distance, 6.8K. He's going to carry a ton of leverage against Anthony Hernandez, especially if I'm already going to be on Hernandez. I just kind of want to be on this matchup as a whole protect myself on the Hernandez side. And then if Shabazian wins, I have a bunch of shots with a 6.8K fighter who likely earns 100 plus points or 90 plus points. And, you know, 40% uh, of the field is killed off with the Hernandez loss. So it's not a binary matchup per se, but Shabazian has a really knockout upside in my opinion. I think he's a strong tournament target in his, in his own right. Anthony Hernandez right now is one of the better options overall on the board. So that's going to be my matchup of the week. All right, guys, thank you so much for the support. As usual, you can follow me on Twitter, Brett Appley, double T, double P, dailyfanmma.com for all your DraftKings breakdowns needs. Good luck in your contest this week, guys. Stay safe out there. We'll talk to you all soon. Peace.